Hey, 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 welcome everyone. Welcome to the Green Nurse Podcast, where we bring hope and inspiration for growth and healing. We're here to change the dialogue and stigma around what it means to feel good and be high. Hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. There are a lot of people who are making amazing cannabis formulations for patients, and there's amazing companies that are selling these great products. Yet no one is truly educating medical patients on how to use cannabis as medicine. That's what we do here at Holistic Caring. We educate and empower and teach on safe consumption. So I'm just gonna start off before we get started with our interview to just show you all a little video about what we do here at the Green Nurses at Holistic Caring. I'm gonna pull up that video file right now and we'll get started. Change the paradigm of healthcare. The Green Nurse is a holistic cannabis nurse that teaches on the endocannabinoid system and the safe utilization of cannabis and other progressive tools to help people reach a better quality of life. I'm the founder of Holistic Caring. We're based here in California and we do educational programs and case management for patients on how to use cannabis therapeutically as a medicine. We're also here to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high, hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. As the founder of Holistic Caring, I basically over, oversee the, the whole ship. And what we're doing is uh, progressive education. Cannabis actually supports all 11 organ systems, our immune system, and all the neurotransmitter signaling systems that give messages to tell our body to either do something or not do something. Because the plant was prohibited, it prevented health professionals, doctors, and nurses from learning about cannabis as medicine. I want to change the paradigm of healthcare and us paving the way into a new vanguard of medicine. And I'm excited to, to really uh, bring this into light. There's a company called Canum that we're uh, uh, merging with and we will now be doing global education. It's about education, it's about empowerment. It's about teaching people how to feel good bridging the gap from what they're not getting from traditional medicine, utilizing different plant medicines, adaptogens, tips, tricks, hugs, and nugs of information to support and nourish the most important system in our body. And it's a lot of soul work, a lot of love, a lot of discipline and meditation. I'm using my life work as a testimony to others to learn how they can be their own hero and then go help heal the world. And we are, as nurses, the game changers. And there you go, growing in health, growing in cannabis. I don't know, that's like one of my favorite videos. <laughs> I've done that. It is, it's inspiring. I know, I can't wait to introduce you. You know, we've been highlighting cannabis health professionals because we are in revolutionary times, we're changing how we approach and take care of patients. And many of our viewers out there, you know, they hear us talk about safe consumption and the safe utilization of plant medicines, yet we really haven't discussed what it means to be working in the cannabis space as a coach, consultant, clinician, or business owner and the legalities of doing such work. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about legal risk reduction, what people should know about if they're exploring cannabis as an entrepreneur. So I'm really, really excited to introduce our guest today. We have in, um, healthcare attorney Maureen West as our special guest, who is actually offering her services on our website for those who may be interested in cannabis coaching, consulting, or starting a business. Maureen West, JDRDH, owns Maureen West and Associates, LLC, a boutique loof law firm. She also serves as general counsel for Flow Network, LLC, a psilocybin research company. As a previous Colorado assistant attorney general, Maureen served as legal counsel for 16 years to over a dozen healthcare regulatory boards. She pivoted from law for a short while and became the first industrial hemp program manager in the country. Maureen quickly became passionate about cannabis and given her roots as a licensed healthcare provider, a registered dental hygienist, she draws upon these experiences to serve as a liaison between the legal, healthcare, and cannabis industry. 
Maureen also is an adjunct professor at the University of Denver in the Healthcare Management Master's Program. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you for having me. It's I'm super excited about being here. Oh, good. I, and I'm really, really excited, you know, to, you know, to share about what you do. You know, healthcare attorney mm -hmm. is really, really a great thing because, you know, I, I know for a fact when I first started off in the space, you know, going from the conventional care, the traditional mm -hmm. hospital system to mm -hmm. being a patient and then now entering into the cannabis space as mm -hmm. a clinician, I didn't know the laws. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was really through a lot of trial and <laughs> trial and success that I was able to get through it. So we're really, really excited at Holistic Caring to be able to have you in your services mm -hmm. as a healthcare attorney, first and foremost, to help mm -hmm. direct, like we said, health professionals, mm -hmm. coaches, nurses, and people that are interested in becoming an entrepreneur. So before we get started, what I really loved was that you say that you're a boutique law firm. Mm -hmm. and, and I and I just I just went, what does that mean? Because I, I, I just, I like that. I like that term. It just reminds me of craft cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think basically what, what I represent um, in my boutique law firm, and, and, and it's sort of typical of other boutique law firms, is that we, we, we do things a little differently in the sense that we don't we aren't a big law firm and, and really we don't usually, we don't want to be a big law firm. We want to be able to be very one-on-one um, -on -one with our clients. And, um, and so um, that, that's, that's a big piece of it is just, it's, it's boutique in the sense that it's, it's that personal touch um, that we want to offer. And then also, um, you know, we just, I have a kind of a real range of legal experience uh, from, right. you know, certainly, as I said, a healthcare uh, health law attorney, um, it, but that can be, you know, an understanding of business law, um, regulatory issues, I mean, FDA issues, DEA issues, good manufacturing practices. I mean, it's such a it's such a range um, right. that typically in law you have a specific expertise, and so a boutique law firm um, like mine is able to offer, you know, sort of a variety. Um, yeah, legal That's services. Great. That's great. So prior entering into the cannabis space and actually, you know, plant medicine space, I should say, because mm -hmm. you do a lot of different things. Um, what's your background prior prior to that? Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a I'm a registered dental hygienist, and I um, actually up until COVID, I practiced at dental hygiene about you know maybe four or five hours a month just to be able to, you know, sort of just be in that. Um, healthcare provider um, mindset. So, you know, right. patients had no idea I was an attorney. <laughs> uh, I was just their dental hygienist. I had my whites on. I had my my mask on. I was wearing masks long before COVID, right? And, um, you know, and all those kinds of things. And so, um, so that's really, I always raise that because that's really um, my roots. And mm -hmm. I uh, became an assistant attorney general right out of law school. And that was because I had this dental background. And so I understood the substantive part of, of dental law, whereas most of the attorneys, they, they had no idea uh, that there were 32 teeth and there were you know several services on those teeth and all the different procedures. So um, that's kind of what got me into it. But um, being a person that likes to juggle you know 10 balls at once, um, I was mm -hmm. certainly not content with um, just you know, just doing dental board work. And so I, I actually got into nursing board work right away. Oh. Um, and so, uh, and so that was just something that um, I could relate to. And I've always really admired nurses a lot. I, I really understand, um, well, I, I'm not a nurse, but I, I certainly could appreciate um, the vast um, work that you do and, and all the different um, things that nurses are, are required to do. So anyway, um, but then I, you know, wanted to also represent the physical therapy board and the, mm -hmm. and the um, midwives and the <laughs> speech therapist right. and it kind of goes on and on. And so the gist of it is, is after all those years, um, I got really familiar with lots of different kinds of statutes and lots of different, um, you know, mm -hmm. um, parts of regulatory law. And um, then after that, I decided, you know, it would be interesting to be able to have my own little law practice and, and help healthcare practitioners, whether it be um, starting their own business or if they were having regulatory issues or um, just the whole range of things that can help it, that can happen legally to a healthcare provider. Right. So absolutely. Um, that was just sort of, I was, so I was an assistant attorney general for most of my career. And then, um, 
this uh, I, I worked a lot. One of my one of my friends actually and my colleagues was um, the attorney for the uh, Colorado Department of Agriculture, and he was always talking about hemp, hemp, hemp. And I was interested initially um, as just from a legal point of view because it was I thought it was fascinating that there was this. Um, this whole thing with cannabis going on and it was legal at the state level, not legal at, mm-hmm. at the federal level. It was playing out all over the place. It wasn't just isolated to Colorado. It was playing out nationally and really internationally. And uh, as a lawyer, I thought I've got to get involved in that because that's just not something that comes along very yeah. often in your, in your lifetime, it is in your professional lifetime. So um, I sort of jumped into it and not really understanding it at all, not really understanding cannabis. But I very, I mean, immediately I became very aware of what this, what the cannabis plant can do, whether, you know, be on the hemp side or the medical, medical mm-hmm. cannabis side. And um, so I decided to learn literally from the ground up. So I, right. I, I literally worked with all the farmers and helped write the rule for the hemp program and yeah. just really got to know the industry. And yeah. so um, that's mm-hmm. kind of, you know, my background and kind of what I yeah. bring uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's always evolving. And now I'm interested in psilocybin as well, because I'm interested in oh. plant-based therapeutics. Absolutely. And a lot of nurses too, that are in the cannabis space are also psychedelic nurses. Many of us are mm-hmm. founding members of the International Association of Psychedelic Nurses. And many of mm-hmm. us are also nurse guides that actually are doing these experiences, you know, um, with ketamine and psilocybin. Mm-hmm. and doing a retreat. So it's really been, it's really been great. And so t- speaking about the legality of it, you know, you said that you were doing some nursing board work, mm-hmm. you know, so what, what, did, what does that look like? What did that look like? Because this is, this is something that's really important to nurses right now that are entering into the cannabis space. They're extremely afraid of the board of nursing. Yeah. And, well, um, you know, and for good reason, quite frankly, um, you know, for it's, it's been an interesting thing and I won't, I could spend a whole hour just talking about it and I won't, I'll spare you all that. But um, the point, yeah, the point is, is that, um, you know, when I was a, a assistant attorney general and I, um, and I represented the nursing board, you know, one of the many boards that I represented, um, you know, I got to see all the different kinds of things that go on, all the different kinds of complaints that go on and, um, and, you know, was really, um, you know, sat in and all the on the board meetings, all the decision making. And then, of course, you know, they needed their legal counsel, i.e. me, to be able to advise them whether or not they had enough evidence, whether they had a case, what the, whether ah. the person was practicing within the standard of care. Ah. Um, so, you know, I'm just really, you know, well versed in all the things um, <laughs> that can happen. Yes. Um, and it this doesn't, is, you know, uh-huh. cannabis is one issue. There's a lot of issues. Cannabis yeah, is one of the issues. It is. And so that brings up a really this interesting point. And I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to share a story. And I think maybe sure. you could, you could kind of see. So I had interaction with the nursing board in Massachusetts. Um, uh-huh. I'm, st- I'm licensed in the state of Massachusetts. I started doing cannabis nursing in 2016 started working with patients with a nonprofit that I that I started. And literally, you know, when we started working with patients, it was all volunteer work, because there mm-hmm. was no business that was developed yet. It was really mm-hmm. just getting into the communities and educating and teaching. And so, you know, part of what I do is I'm a writer. So I like to write, I like to educate, I like to share stories, compelling stories of healing, you know, the art and science of nursing comes into play when it comes to cannabis nursing. And so the art, is how you teach the science is you marry, you know, you marry the real world evidence to science. Right. And so um, taking care of a couple of different patients, I decided to blog and do start a blog on sharing my experience of working with patients um, because I wasn't in the conventional system anymore. Well, someone got a hold of one of my blog and decided to report it to the nursing board. Mm-hmm. And so I got a nice big long letter you know, pretty much um, stating that they were concerned that I was practicing medicine, mm-hmm. that I was uh, violating HIPAA compliance. There was no names. There was no identifying factors. Trust me, I know all that. Right. And then they were concerned. That, you know, they were concerned that I was breaking the law mm-hmm. by educating. So it was very, very interesting. And I went through their rigorous process of being investigated, and literally, you know, some of the questions they said, "What? Well, what makes you think?" you're qualified to teach on cannabis. And I said, what makes you think I'm not? Number one. Right, right. Number two, (laughs) you and I even having this discussion (laughs) makes me realize how much more work I have to do. Right. Number three, I invited them to put me on trial. I invited them to pull me in. And I said, listen, this is a really, really great learning opportunity. And I'm going to bring my media team 
and we're going to do a live podcast while you put me on trial. And I basically, because you can, you can do that. And I just said, I, I really, really encourage you. So I've submitted everything and I would like to come in and I would like to speak um, on behalf of myself <laughs> as a medical cannabis patient and also as a nurse trying to literally save lives. And um, basically, you know, they thought about it and they dropped the case. Yeah. So, you know, but, but it's just very interesting. And, the, you know, the reason why I felt so comfortable with that was because, A, I knew I could never go back to the conventional system. So I, mm -hmm. I didn't mind challenging them in the regard right. of that regard. Right. Um, and also because, A, learning about what I learned and also learning that the National Council State Boards of Nursing that puts out the nursing regulations, the nursing regulatory board that uh -huh. puts out the exam for nurses, the NCLEX exam for nurses to be registered and licensed in each state, they put out a call to action that all nurses must have six essential areas of knowledge when it comes to cannabis as medicine. Uh -huh. And so what I found very interesting is that the board of nursing didn't know that. The National Council State Boards of Nursing wrote a 64 page nursing regulatory document in a magazine and each nursing board in the state doesn't know about that. So there is really, really, really a lot of errors and lack of communication across the board when it comes to cannabinoid therapeutics and working with patients. So, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, there's just, uh, it's just, you know, as the bottom line is, is that the um, the mission of a of a board of any kind of board, whether it be you know medical board, nursing board, whatever, right. um, is to protect public welfare and safety. Exactly. It's not to be punitive. Right. And so I um, I won't again. I, I could speak. I, I won't go on and on about it, other than to say that. I, in my role as an attorney advising them, I was always very, very um, adamant that they um, absolutely protect public welfare and safety. That was our mission. Mm -hmm. That was our job, but not cross that right. line in, into getting punitive. Um, right. Uh, just because you happen to disagree with something, um, because then you start really, it be, really does become an abuse of power. And of so, um, and so, you know, there's some, there are some really, I mean, the bottom line is, is it's, this is a, Boards are made up of people that come in with all yeah. kinds of agendas and all kinds of perceptions and all kinds of, you know, backgrounds and whatever the case may be. And some sometimes the squeaky wheel is the one, you know, you know, that gets greased. And so um, I think there's I think that's really true in cannabis. And so mm -hmm. I think that um, it's really important that we um, do educate, 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 including the educate. boards. And I, I guess the bottom line I would say too is, is the, even though um, right now um, there's just, I think a lot of challenges um, with with boards and um, cannabis, I think over time, I mean, we certainly can anticipate this is gonna change. Why? Because the students that are coming out of nursing schools don't have the same biases and prejudices mm -hmm. and whatever the case may be. In fact, if anything, they're the opposite. They're much more right. open to plant-based therapeutics. And particularly because we already we already have demonstrated that a lot of the other pharmaceutical options don't work yeah. um, for whatever reason. And so right. um, I think that we are really, we, we, we're going in the right direction with all yes. of this. And we just have to hang in there and continue yep. to do the right thing. And um, but in the meantime, it's it's a very scary territory for a lot of nurses because exactly, um, you know, yeah. and so you need, you know, I would say um, you need an attorney who really understands these issues yep. because oftentimes if you have the right person, um, they can sort of shut it down right away. Right. Um, but they have to. But if not, it can get really out of control. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree. And so this is the part that's interesting with nurses. You know, if nurses are out there watching. You know, you know, bottom line is that we do, we do have a healthcare attorney that can help guide and direct you, you know, when you're entering into the space of using, you know, teaching and educating on cannabis and plant medicines. So, which is great. So what and drives you to do the work that do you, you mind do? mind if I jump in really quick on that one? Because I always have sure. to do my disclaimer and I just want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm licensed in Colorado. So certainly if you're a Colorado nurse, I can, you know, I can 
I can be, I can provide legal advice. Um, I can only do that within the state of Colorado. However, um, yeah. two things. Um, first of all, I mean, I can certainly um, talk law to you and point you in the right direction because otherwise you could spend a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time. Um, right you know, tracking down attorneys that really can't help you. So number right. one, and number two- So you're a liaison. I, yes, I'm a liaison. And number two, um, I do um, serve on the cannabis law section for the American Bar Association. So I'm sort of building a list of attorneys nationally that I can help nice. direct you to. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm just sort of clear about that. So yeah, go ahead, well, I'm sorry. You know, while we're on that topic, you know, you know, if someone does contact you, why don't we just jump right to that? Right. So if, for, for example, you know, you're in our professional directory, you know, we're offering your services on our website, which is a great, with a portion of proceeds that are going to our nonprofit for our free nurse line services. So say there was a nurse that was interested because this is kind of the similar as, to, as nursing, mm -hmm. right? Your nurses are licensed in particular states, but as coaches, we can educate anywhere, anytime, any place. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's just, there's, there's a big difference. And when you're looking at scope of practice, it has to look at, are you practicing? Are you hands on? What are you talking about? According to the FDA, the only thing that can cure, treat or prevent a disease is a pharmaceutical that's been approved by the FDA. You know, so basically we're, we're teaching and educating nurses that they do have a right to talk. You know, they do have a right <laughs> exactly. to talk. You know what I mean? You have a right. You know, and as a nurse, if you know something that could potentially relieve suffering and improve quality of life, and it's based on research and science, specifically the endocannabinoid system, we do need to really take a good hard look at that. Because as clinicians, when we are working with patients, either inpatient, outpatient, or in the community, every single thing that we tell our patient to do or not do affects the endocannabinoid system. So this goes way beyond plant medicine. This goes way beyond cannabis plant, hemp plant, psychedelics, even the plants. It has to do with the system itself. Right. And the right. endocannabinoid exactly. system is modulated multiple different ways. Cannabis is just one way. You can modulate and regulate and nourish your endocannabinoid system multiple different ways. Cannabis is just one way. So that's one of the most important things that when I'm you know, teaching nurses that you, you have a right to talk about this. You have a right to talk about the system that you never learned about. Just because you didn't learn about it in college or school right. doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Just because you can't see the moon in the daytime doesn't mean that it's not there. And it's the same thing when it comes to cannabis education. Just because you didn't learn it doesn't mean that we don't have an obligation to learn it Absolutely. Um, right now. Yeah, we, we, we do have an obligation to learn it because, again, it'd be different if everything was going really, really well. And, you know, all of our, you know, pharmaceuticals were really, you know, doing you know, what they, what they were, you know, doing a great job and they were accessible and affordable and all the kinds of things that would be helpful to people. But we're actually kind of in the opposite situation in, in, in many ways. I'm not saying about that, but certainly about all pharmaceuticals by any right. stretch of the imagination, but, but that's actually one of the things that prompted me to get into, to get so interested in cannabis was because I, I literally couldn't take one more situation where a, I had a, a licensee, let's just say a nurse, for example, could have been any kind of licensee that had some sort of, you know, maybe a substance abuse problem. And what we, what we were going to do is, was we were going to discipline that, you know, person so severely that they, A, were going to lose, the, lose their livelihood. B, they were going to turn to that substance even more. I mean, it's just, we've got to look at other options. And and I do believe plant they, plant-based therapeutics is something that is, is going to pro provide great options. So I, I completely agree. And, you know, when, when we talk about pharmaceuticals, I'm not anti-pharma. They definitely serve a purpose. But a lot of things that we didn't learn as nurses is that many, many pharmaceuticals cause a drug nutrient depletion. A lot of people don't know that. But when you are taking a pharmaceutical and it depletes your body of nutrients, we need to understand micronutrients, is which fuels our cells and, and really is, is huge, huge, huge in a healthy endocannabinoid system. So if your body's being depleted of nutrients, right, cannabis can mitigate side effects. Cannabis is a phytobotanical nutrient filled with cannabinoids, terpenes, essential fatty acids, which is really, really great. And five or more pharmaceuticals, there's a 50% chance that if these drugs are interacting. If you're on 10 or more pharmaceuticals, 100% chance that these drugs are interacting and probably not in your best and highest interest. And I'm sure, as you know, too, as, as a healthcare attorney, you know, what, what are <laughs> adverse drug side effects 
is the main reason why we have 65 in the emergency room visits, adverse drug side effects for the old people, you know, people are seniors, you know, they're, they're coming into the hospital with slips, with falls, with accidents, all related to side effects from pharmaceuticals. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's, we've got to stop being in denial about this really is what it comes down to. And I think we're, we're, that's the direction we're going in. I mean, we're there, but we need to just really expound upon it and just make sure that this is, you know, shouted loud and clear. It is. Well, this isn't leads to the next question. What changes would you like to see in the medical cannabis arena? Well, I think that, um, you know, Part of it probably comes from my background, but one of the things I'd like to see is all of this, um, these, you know, sanctions for lack of a better word, you know, really lifted on healthcare professionals because until healthcare professionals are free to discuss plant, you know, cannabis with patients, um, and, you know, prescribe, however that's going to look like, um, yeah. it's really hard to move forward. And so I'd like to see, um, a lot more conversation about that and a lot more improvement about that. Um, I'd also like to see the medical cannabis community kind of reclaim their territory. And what I mean by that is, is because I got involved in hemp very early on, I mean, before it was, you know, um, before the farm bill, I mean, but back in 2016, which, you know, as we know, cannabis years are like dog years. I mean, one year is equal to seven, right? I mean, it's just, right. you, become an, you become an expert pretty quickly, um, especially if you've been around 2016, which isn't even 10 years ago. But in this space, that's a long time ago. And um, I, I do feel, and I'm, I'm not shy about saying this, that I feel that the recreational side sort of used the word medical um, to sort oh, yeah. of, um, you know, to kind of, to get cannabis in, but then I, I can't tell you how many conferences I'm like, well, where's your healthcare professionals? Why don't you have healthcare professionals? Right. You're saying it's medical cannabis. Why do you not have the healthcare professionals talking about this? They're right. the people on the ground that can tell you about this. And so I think, quite frankly, one of my main missions is, is just for medical cannabis to reclaim its territory and yeah. to, to just really allow um, patients to have proper access. I mean, you know, I, I'm not trying to say, and I mean this, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything against dispensaries. I mean, they certainly, um, but you know, you still don't really know. You don't have a healthcare professional there. You'll take something because they say it's good for sleep, but you really have no idea uh, what's exactly in it, why it's good. And really it's a healthcare professional that can help answer those questions. Absolutely. And that's what we're doing here at Holistic Caring and the Green Nurses. Elizabeth Mack, the CEO and founder who wrote cannabis for health become a coach she's created programs for industry professionals not only nurses doctors clinicians all types of providers but also for cannabis industry professionals including dispensaries and so part of our nonprofit is we are offering a medical doorway to dispensaries meaning that we can create programs and platforms within the dispensary that they can use right on their website and we, we're going to be offering a nurse line. So, you know, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you, you know, um, it, it, because the, the, the people that are at the dispensary, you know, they can't give advice. <laughs> we're not, no one's supposed to be giving advice, but even the way that they're educating, right. you know, I've, I've had incidents where patients, you know, I've made recommendations for patients to go to a dispensary and then they come, come home, call me, and then they show me what the, the person sold them when I specifically, and it wasn't a prescription, it was just recommendations of what types of products to purchase. And they came home, a diabetic coming home with three chocolate bars. <laughs> right, exactly. And oh it's a, that, that's a great example, actually. And, <laughs> and, and I just feel um, very, like, very strongly that I want to be able to use all my background, which is, you know, being a mainstream uh, health healthcare attorney um, and be able to give voice to medical cannabis and say, yeah. Hey, yeah. you know what? Um, you need to be looking to the healthcare professionals about this instead of yeah. just sort of using this word medical well, to get in and then right. not giving them any weight uh, or attention that they deserve. Right. No, I completely agree with you. And it's and it's very confusing, you know, very, very confusing for a lot of patients because there are so many different products that are out there, you know, to be used. And it's very interesting too. Some of the patients that come to us actually that do want it, that are afraid to get their medical card because they have a license to carry. It's just really interesting story. A lot of, you know, medical card states, you can't have, you know, you you give up your right, your license to carry if you get a medical cannabis card. 
And so a lot of patients in Massachusetts that we took care of would come just through our cons- coaching and consulting services and they'd be shopping at adult use dispensaries. So my job was to sit there and go through the adult use dispensary list and to help them sort out what types of products would benefit for their condition, right? Because, right. and different ways of using it and consuming it as, as well as CBD, you know, different various formulations. But, but, but that's the thing too, is, you know, these, these, so these patients are going into rec dispensaries, but they're actually using it for medicine. Um, and, and that was really, really interesting. Um, and, and, and when COVID hit back in 2020, we have a we have a robust medical card you know um, platform where we do medical cards. Well, what ended up happening was when cannabis, when the recreational dispensaries shut down for a short period of time, people started flooding through the doors to get their medical cannabis card. And you know, part of me was like, oh, they just want to get high. But it was very interesting. Every single person that came through, that was originally shopping at a medical dispensary every or adult use recreational dispensary every single one of them that came through was using it as medicine they just didn't want to get their medical cannabis card for one reason or another so i found it very fascinating number one and number two the next thing i learned was that all of them were inhaling and smoking and not being educated on the other methods of administration so the part that was great because any any first time medical cannabis card person, they have to get a 30 minute consult. That's one of our standard operating procedures is that if you're going to get a medical cannabis card from us, you get educated beforehand, period. And so, and that allows us an opportunity to find out what they're doing and to help them get the results better. I mean, I'm a nurse, I've done research, I'm published, I've worked in so many different settings. I've been in the cannabis space for a while. It took me two years to figure out how to make cannabis work for me. And so basically the message is, is here as cannabis nurses, we are patients as well as providers. We've done the research. We know what works. And so we want to help you get there quicker. And so it was very interesting to even see patients that were using cannabis in the adult use recreational market, purchasing at dispensaries for years and years and years coming through to us and how much education that they didn't have. So well, they can't they can't have it because, you know, with all again, all due respect to, you know, to bud tenders, they're just that they're not trained for for this. They're, they, yeah. You know, you need you need a lot of clinical uh, education and expertise. Um, that's what this requires and to, yeah. to for it to be effective. And and so we need to turn to our healthcare professionals for that. But they be, only can do that if they're not going to get sanctioned by boards and yep. worry about, you know, what they voice and all of those kinds of things. And so those days really need to be over. I agree. So I have a next question. I have another question for you and sure. it has to do with nurses that do have chronic medical conditions that are using pharmaceuticals versus using cannabinoids. What, what are your thoughts on nurses using cannabis as medicine working? And well, I you mean, know, you popping know, positive on a test. So a nurse will go get a job. I was offered a job at a couple of different big medical institutions during COVID. And my first question was, um, I use, I have, I'm a medical cannabis card holder. I don't use pharmaceuticals. I use plant medicines. And they pretty much told me that if I popped positive, I wouldn't get the job. Right. And that's something <laughs> that we really, yeah, we really need to take a look at. I, I've dealt with, you know, hundreds of cases of, of licensees who, um, you know, were somebody, you know, were maybe under the influence or allegedly under the influence. And so clearly we don't want um, surgeons doing surgery if they're high. I mean, we don't, we don't want that. Um, we want to make sure that, um, that, you know, we, again, public safety and that they're, they're not impaired. Having said that, that doesn't, shouldn't, shouldn't prohibit them from being able to use it as medicine. And, um, and if it's not, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is if it's not impairing their ability to do their, to do their practice, to to their, of their practice of nursing, then there shouldn't be any limitations. I mean, that's the pivotal question. Is this impairing your ability to practice as a nurse? And I think, again, we can all agree that we don't want impairment. Um, So how do we determine impairment? But how do we determine impairment? And we can't, Mm -hmm. and just because, but the, the point of that is, is that just because you have THC in your system does not mean you're impaired. So mm-hmm. those that's the kind of analysis that we need to really look exactly. at. 
um, and, and, you know, and, and try to understand because, um, because of the nature of THC, because it lingers in your system as opposed to, you know, alcohol, which of course was the one for a long time. I mean, it was a lot easier to be able to tell if somebody was under the influence of alcohol because, right. you know, uh, but so that, that's sort of, again, I won't belabor it, but that's the pivotal no. question. And that's no. the question right. that needs to be asked. Right. Um, exactly. And, and exactly. we can't make assumptions. We can't make assumptions that because you have THC in your system that you're impaired. Because right. very likely you're not. Right. Well, I know I've got a lot of THC in my system, but I'm right. not it impaired. Right. It doesn't, you're impaired, <laughs> it, it, you know? And so um, we got to get to the point where we're having that conversation. Yeah. And it, it's true because, you know, if you think about when you have, when you look at the endocannabinoid, I'm going to bring a little science into it. The endocannabinoid system, we have one, not because of the cannabis plant, but because we make molecules in our body like the plant. The plant makes THC, we make a molecule exactly like it called anandamide. <laughs> the molecular structure is the exact same thing. So when, so when we're, you're thinking about that, right, the THC molecule is 10 times stronger than the anandamide molecule, or another way of saying that is the anandamide molecule is one tenth the strength of the THC molecule. That's why it works so well in so many different conditions, right? We make these internal endogenous cannabinoids very similar to the plant. And if we don't make enough of our own, we have what they call an endocannabinoid deficiency. And when you have an endocannabinoid deficiency, you don't make enough of those molecules to auto-regulate all of your 11 organ systems, your immune system, and the messenger signaling systems. So things get out of whack, right? So when people are supplementing with plant phytocannabinoids, the goal is to supplement just enough to trigger your own system to start working on its own. And oftentimes what happens is patients have such a severe endocannabinoid deficiency that oftentimes that they do need to use small amounts. And so then we're talking, that's why we talk about microdosing. Microdosing mimics endocannabinoid system signaling. You don't need a lot, little bits, small amounts throughout the day to mimic the endocannabinoid system that's going on and off all day long. So yeah, it's really, really powerful. And I, and you know, and I've talked to a couple of nurses too, who, you know, are, our nurses that work with us and you know, we, we have the pharmaceutical discussion, we have the cannabis discussion. What did it feel like to be on all those pharmaceuticals as to what does it feel like to be on cannabis? And many of us that were on over, I would say 10 pharmaceuticals at our sickest, uh -huh. we couldn't function. We were completely 100% impaired and, and on pharmaceuticals. However, we could show up to work if we wanted to and work. Right. 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 <laughs> Because right, you had a prescription. So that's the part that gets just really scary because we, in, in our discussion, we look at these, this plant as a nutrient, as a supplement, which brings us in balance. The last thing, the last thing sick and suffering patients, especially nurses, want to do is feel worse. <laughs> you just don't. Right? No, absolutely not. And, and I yeah. think, you know, it was just when I was uh, at the end, when I became the industrial hemp program manager, um, I, I was, you know, I was there for about a week and, you know, I really, again, I didn't know anything about really cannabis. I was just sort of learning, but, um, yeah. but I, you know, and I had come from being an assistant attorney general where I had dealt with some really, really high profile and serious cases. And after about a week at being um, at the Colorado Department of Agriculture, I just sort of looked at everybody and said, what is the big deal here? This is a plant. I'm having a really hard time understanding why we're spending so much energy and we're so divisive and we're so this and we're so that over a plant. I mean, yeah. I just, it, it just, cause I'm a, I'm a very bottom line person. I, I'm like, I cut to the chase on that. everything on my analysis. Mm. I just sort of go, what's the bottom line here. And, right. and so, and, you know, and I, and I also share sometimes that depending upon what your religious background is, if you have, have one, you don't have one. But the point is this, is that I'm like, if you do have any kind of a Judeo Christian background, you're kind of go, okay, day three, the plant was created. Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, right. it's been around a really long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it was, yeah. and it was, it was created for a purpose. So, so, you know, mm -hmm. we should be able to get past all of this political and all this, all this stuff and just kind of go, this is a plant. It has a purpose, actually many purposes. Let's just kind of start there. Yeah. Well, that's it too. And I'll, I'll tell you the telltale story of it all is with my children. So when I started developing the green nurse, I wrote a patient handbook and, you know, you need to write it at a level. So, you know, you know, middle school level, a little bit, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade level. 
And so I sat my kids down and we were looking through it. I didn't have any pictures. It was just the, the, the dialogue, the words, the verbiage. And I wanted to see if they understood it. And so at the end I said, and then I showed them the pictures and they go, wait a minute, cannabis and marijuana is the same thing. They didn't <laughs> know because right. of what they had heard and what they had learned. And that to me was a shame, you know, um, about the inf the misinformation that is just, that's everywhere. And so, it's you know, and, and yeah, it is everywhere. And, um, yeah. but that's what we're here for. That's what <laughs> we're here for. <laughs> so here, here's another one. What do you, a couple other questions, because I, I sure. love your questions. What do you see as the biggest obstacle to improving access of medical cannabis for patients? Um, well, I think really the biggest obstacle is misperception. It's, 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 it, it, we have to get over this hurdle. Um, and, and the only way we're going to do it is, is by being really, really, in my opinion, just cut to the chase. And I spoke, uh, about a month ago, I was speaking at an American Bar Association event uh, for the cannabis law section. And, um, you know, it's the kind of thing where people kind of, you know, they, they're kind of curious, right? The lawyers, kind of, and this is a, this is an insurance group. These are business litigation and insurance attorneys. Okay. But they're kind of interested in this cannabis thing. Right. So they came and, um, you know, my very first, the first thing out of my mouth was, look, I was a Colorado assistant attorney general. I, I have a, I was a very main, I am, you know, have been and continue to be a mainstream attorney. You know, I'm just an attorney um, that discovered that this was an area that was, you know, fascinating as a lawyer and wasn't, had, you know, allowed for important work. And, you know, it just sort of dispelled all those pre, you know, as like all those misconceptions and all those, you know, and just being able to, to make it real. And right. then you can start talking about anecdotal, you know, information and, and Orion's law and those kinds of things. And you, I think that's the thing is we have to get over um, all of the bias and all the misperception yeah. by just starting the conversation with real life anecdotal stories about how it helps. Yeah. And not real even, world evidence, real that's world evidence, is. and not even mm -hmm. allow yourself to go into thinking that this is, there's something funny about this. There's nothing funny about it at all. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a very, it's very serious when you're talking about providing, you know, help to, to patients. Yeah. <laughs> so that's to patients, you yeah. know, I mean, that's what it's all about. And so I think that once we can, and I think again, because the younger people don't have those same, um, Ba that baggage, I guess you could the say. The bias. And the, <laughs> the bias. I mean, I think we're, we're definitely the, the going dissonance. in the right direction. That's what it, it's yeah. the cognitive dissonance. Where it's here a, it yeah, is. exactly. We're, we're, we're spewing information, research, education, real world evidence. We're presenting regular, you know, real research. And then people, regardless of what you present to them, they have a feeling, a bias, the perception. And they don't even know where it comes from because it's they don't even know where it comes down. from. And so <laughs> they've heard you know, it over and over and over again. Like me, my mother, my mother blocked me on Facebook and wrote me out of her will. I'm not kidding for a year and a half. Yeah. My daughter is a drug dealer. I paid for Boston College. <laughs> she was, she was yeah. traumatized by me using cannabis as medicine. That's like, we, that's like, and that's I know. when I knew. That's when I knew I have a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. Wow. And so I think, you know, it's, it's just sort of a, like a lawyer trick. It's like what you do is you try to immediately not be on the defensive or, you no, know, like, like no. sports, whatever you go on the offensive. And I think is yeah. if we can just immediately start the conversation being on the offensive and not having to defend, you know, these right. misperceptions, but just blow right through them and say, no, nope, that's not true. Let me tell you what yeah. really is true. I think that, that we will save lots of time and we will gain lots of support. Yeah. And that's, that's why one of the reasons I started my podcast back in 2018 was number one, because I learned, knew and found out I had an endocannabinoid system. Number two, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing put out the call to action that all nurses must have six essential areas of knowledge when it comes to cannabis as medicine. And number three, because I saw my mother who was sick and suffering, completely 100% plagued with stigma wrote me out of her will for a year and a half. And I said, wow, I really have to change this. This saved my life. It got me off of 18 pharmaceuticals. And so okay. as a nurse, 18 pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And so as a nurse, I, I, I just said, I, I'm, I'm sorry, mom, I love you. I'm not going to try to convince you. Hopefully someday you'll see it. Yeah, right. So that's what I started my podcast. And it was my podcast. 
and sharing the stories, the compelling stories of healing from patients. It was a nun that I've been taking care of and she's, she's out in the open. She's been on the podcast a few times. She came off of 400 micrograms of fentanyl yeah. in two years. And so my mom, so I showed her that, and that's the whole Catholic thing, the religious thing, the sin, you know, this cannabis is a sin, it's the devil's lettuce, the whole nine yards. So Sister Suzanne comes on, shares her story, is very vocal, very verbal, very grateful. And, you know, and I had to throw a little twist in there and just joking around. I said, Sister Suzanne, this question's for my mother. You know, what would Jesus say about this cannabis? I said, there's a lot of people out there that are really plagued with stigma. You know, and this is with all due respect. And Sister Suzanne was so cute. She looked at me and she goes, she's like 100 pounds soaking wet. She goes, Sherry, Jesus would say, what the frig did it take you so long to use this God-given <laughs> plant that I created for you? Jesus would expect us to use this. And it would be a sin if we didn't. Do you know what I did? I took that two minutes, <laughs> sent it right to my mother. And I'm not kidding you. About a month later, she called me up and she says, okay, if this, if a nun's going to take it, I'll try it. <laughs> so she said. Well, you know, I'm telling you, it's all about day three. <laughs> right? Right? It's, you know, it's just, it was created. Um, and so why? Right. <laughs> For what? Right. Exactly. Exactly. I just want to see how we're doing on time. So we are getting close, but I want to ask a couple other questions. Sure. What do you think the medical cannabis landscape will look like in 10 years? Or how are you hoping that it'll look like? What do you think, think it'll it's... look like? And what would you like it to look like? Well, I think it will look very different. I, I, I think that, um, that, you know, everything we've just talked about in terms of these misperceptions and these biases and these prejudices and all of those things, I think that um, there will still probably be remnants of them. I'm not going to say it's going to be completely gone, but I think mm -hmm. that they will be confusing to a lot of people that they even ever existed. Um, right. And so I think that we have a lot of work to do, but I think that it's entirely doable. And so I think that the landscape's going to look very different. Um, and and what I think that's going to look like, at, I, I really believe that people are going to turn towards plant-based therapeutics. I just, I, I think that um, we are just exhausted with the other options that people have that aren't really even really good options. And again, yeah. it's not to say that we don't need, you know, all this great, you know, research and, and certain medications and Western medicine and all those kinds of things. Um, but there's plenty of room for plant-based therapeutics and we need to make that space. And yeah. I, I really anticipate, I really expect that People are just going to, it's going to, it's going to become very natural and there will be a time when we will look back and we, we won't even believe we were having these conversations. I know. I know. And I'm <laughs> so, so excited for that. You know, so excited for that. The other thing that you do that I love is you're in a professor, you know, so you're an adjunct right. professor and, you know, hopefully some of your students will be listening. So there are a few main issues that you'd like your students to walk away with, with this, with this interview that we just had. Well, actually, I think I will send this link to my students. I hadn't thought about that because I, I love my students and um, and I, I love to, you know, get them to let them see, you know, different aspects of what you do. Because as an adjunct professor in particular, you try to bring your real world experience. You're not like this professor all the time right. that's tenured. You want to you want to bring your real world experience to them. And so um, and so I, I do actually raise this a lot in my classes. I, I use um uh, particularly medical cannabis as um, is, is something to discuss in healthcare because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and you know, like I say, um, they, I, I, they're all over it. I mean, to them, it's just right. sort of natural. Like, of course we want to look at that as, as an option. And so um, I'm, I'm in the process of, you know, possibly developing some courses that um, so that when, when, for example, students, leave their program, they will have the option, at least as an elective, to take a course in plant-based therapeutics, which would involve, you know, ca medical cannabis, um, psilocybin, whatever, other mm -hmm. other possible ones. And so um, it's all about education. It, it really is. Yeah. It's all about education. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. And so I, I love the opportunity <laughs> to be able to bring it to them. And, and so many of them want to learn more. They're hungry for for information and um, they want to sometimes do their capstones on these kinds of um, yes. issues. So um, yeah, so that's, it's really, it's really fun for me 
to be able to be in a healthcare administration program. It's a master's program and to be able to be the voice of this in that program That's at the awesome. University of Denver. That's yeah, excellent. It's very cool. Thank you so much for what you do. Absolutely. Amazing. Oh, thank you. Amazing. So speaking of education, I'm going to be promoting holistic caring, one of our programs. So as you know, at holistic caring, we provide programs for patients and professionals. We do a mentoring, we take care of patients, we do coaching and consulting. And so this month is autoimmune month. It's actually irritable bowel, um, irritable bowel, gut health month. And so we did a podcast earlier today on um, inflammatory bowel disease versus irritable bowel syndrome and those different conditions and what cannabinoids can do to help. And then we, we poked a little bit at autoimmune conditions as it's related to gut health. And so Elizabeth has created this amazing program called Autoimmune and Cannabis Program. And so we have that actually on sale through the rest of the month, 25% off. And the part that's so really cool about this program is it talks about what is autoimmune conditions. We'll list a lot of different conditions that are autoimmune conditions. We'll look at the traditional or conventional therapies that are prescribed. And then we look at the different cannabinoids that can be prescribed or used, utilized, as well as other therapies that support and nourish the endocannabinoid system. So it's autoimmune, cannabis, endocannabinoid system, plant formulations, and dosing protocols that have been studied by research. So it's really, really good. So it's the art and science of nursing, that hope, that inspiration, that growth and healing married to science under this educational platform. So the other cool thing too is that um, we are also our nurse coaching session. So if you actually do book a nurse coaching session with us at Holistic Caring, a 30 minute or a 60 minute patient coaching session, Elizabeth's offering these programs for half off. So that's the other thing that's really great. So we wanna give a big shout out to Elizabeth Mack, the CEO and founder of Holistic Caring. Um, really grateful for all the work that she's doing, bringing this amazing ecosystem, you know, and her global programs, literally globally across the world to educate practitioners on how to incorporate, you know, um, cannabinoid therapeutics into their practice. So this has been amazing. Make sure you visit Maureen um, at MaureenWestLaw.com. She is also on our website in our professional directory. So at Holistic Caring, you know, what we're doing, like I said, we're creating an ecosystem for patients and providers. And so providers that are interesting, interested entering into the cannabis space, we have a professional directory. And Maureen West is one of our healthcare attorneys who is doing, you know, triage and consulting and coaching, um, you know, for people that are interested. So make sure you check it out. Check it out. And um, this has been an amazing show. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm gonna end it with one of our favorite little videos and um, we'll be here next week. Next week at noontime, I'll call it at high noon. We're having um, Chris Williams on and we're gonna be talking a little bit more about professional coaching and a program that she has coming up for those um, new entrepreneurs in the cannabis space. So remember everyone what it's all about. It is truly about living your best life and helping others do the same. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. We're here to educate and empower patients to make choices that are best for them. We're also here to decrease stigma around what it means to feel good and be high. Hence the H for hope, I for inspiration, G for growth, and H for healing. The Green Nurse is a holistic cannabis nurse that teaches on the endocannabinoid system and the safe utilization of cannabis and other progressive tools to help people reach a better quality of life. I was cannabis agnostic for many, many years. And you know, the more research I did, the more I discovered the cannabis is this amazing medicine. I was told that I had a four stage 
pancreatic cancer. The doctor really told me he couldn't do anything else. He gave me her name and she called me and she came to my house. She started to give me cannabis. My oncologist was puzzled because he couldn't find the cancer anymore. All of the learning that we get yeah. comes from the Green Nurses Group, comes from their support, comes from their guidance. I trust everything that she says. Simply meet people where they're at. The plant doesn't, you know, stress to grow, so we don't stress to share it. We're healing people. Cannabis has been used as a medicine for tens upon thousands of years. Here's the big message. Cannabis needs to be federally legal. We need to have laws that are the same across all 50 states that allow access to anyone and everyone who wants to utilize this powerful medicine.